I, I want to be clear on this too. Somebody, somebody uh, recently said, because I was uh, uh, saying something rather disparaging about Scientology, um, and they were saying, well, you know, what difference does it make uh, if they believe in this or that? And I said, not a darn thing. I have nothing against what they believe. I don't believe it, of course, but it's, it's not what Scientology teaches as theology that is upsetting. It is how they, they conduct themselves as an organization and how they have destroyed so many people's lives. So, but Correct, because if you actually read Dianetics, they're talking about your mind state and how to make your mind more clear and more active and how to make yourself more focused so that if you need a task to get done, you get it done within a timely, effective manner. And that's a great goal for anybody. If Dianetics helps me get to the end point of making that possible in my life, I'm all for it. Sure. But at the same time, I have to pay buy the book and I have to pay to take the test and I have to pay to get into the centers and get to all the different levels and they don't start telling me the more in-depth stuff until I get up the ranks and OT levels and it, it, they're told if you are told an OT level say that I'm at, uh, OT level 2 and I'm told something by an OT level 4 that they just learn because they come out there so close, oh that was the greatest class ever and they tell me I'm now going to get sick and die because I was told to me I wasn't properly trained to hear. Right, right. I, 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 I understand that. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, squirrels. The school, well, they have two different kinds of schools. They have the school for adults and then they have the school for the children. No, 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 no. I said squirrels. Oh, the squirrels. The squirrels are for people who leave Scientology and expose Scientology. Would They're you? the ones that are usually in Scientology at some point, and they know enough information to hurt Scientology because they can now say, yeah, I was taught that on level four. I was taught that on level seven. Yeah. And they can confirm it, but they don't. Scientology doesn't want that information linked because if it's free and on the Internet, who's going to pay for it? Sure. So so would you be considered a squirrel, or was your uh, relationship with them too peripheral? No, I, I have been contacted by Scientology. <laughs> um, it, was, it wasn't nearly as bad as some of the people that you saw in the documentary going clear. Um, they are, they're, they're considered schools because they were in for many, many, many years, and they had very close relations with David Miscavige and L. Ron Hubbard. But my involvement, because it was peripheral, when I left and I started working with these various websites about Scientology and saying that, you know, don't join if you are researching this, this is a bad company because, and given the reasons why, then they, they found my number indirectly and they started calling me. Mm -hmm. And they started to harass me that way. They never actually showed up. I ended up changing my number and they haven't found it since. So... Right now, it's not even published under my name, so that's not even an issue. They can't find me if they wanted to. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because in the documentary, yeah, you you see people showing at up at people's doors, and these people are ex Scientologists. Not only are they ex Scientologists, they're people who are coming out in opposition of the organization, and they're basically just harassed to no end. Uh, yes. It's, uh, I would be considered more of a PTS, which is a potential trouble source, and that's somebody that anybody who has some connection to Scientology, you don't have to be in the church to be a potential trouble source or a PTS. Then there are people who do suppressive acts, which I would also be guilty of according to their doctrine, which is somebody who is in contact with a suppressive person that, and that's anybody who views or says or reads anything negative about Scientology, doesn't matter what it is. And I make my approach towards, you know, what they're saying and teaching as this is legit or this is unlegit. And if I say this is wrong and evil and this is a bad way to go, then I would be considered a suppressive act in addition to that. In order to be considered a suppressive person, though, you have to actually join the church. I see. And most people who are out now are not, as they receive an official letter from the Church of Scientology declaring them a suppressive person. So the what was that first uh, uh, that first title? Yes, yes. So 
by me conducting this interview, am I that now? Yes. Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the, the forbidden information uh, since you're, you're so open with it. Uh, what is the theology? What is this, this grand master plan of the universe? How did we all get here and where are we going? They're basically what they say, and this is what they learned OT3. They do not learn this any time before then. By this point, they've paid about anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000, depending on when and where they take the classes. But they believe 75 trillion, that's the peak, years ago, they sent an overlord called Venus was in charge of a very overpopulated planet and solar system. And so to correct it, he took these jet airline DC-98 airplanes, filled them up with all these people, put them in these freezer containers, and then dumped their frozen bodies into volcanoes on the Earth and blew them up with H-bombs. And then he put this shield around the Earth, preventing these Satans from leaving and their souls going out into the heavens. And they came back onto the Earth and they attacked themselves to the only living being that had a brain that could support their theologies and their ideas. So basically we're all invaded by aliens according to that. Oh, uh, well, I mean, from what you've said so far, it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, all right. It, but, but again, it, it's you could have told me that about any other organization, and I would just say, fine, let them enjoy that. Uh, uh, hope, yeah. hope it works out for you. Uh, but and that would have been fine if I could have read that material like I do out of the Bible, but they have to pay so much money and time to learn that information. Sure, sure. That that is, and and above and beyond the the, the money, it is the repressive uh, the repressive acts towards members, the the, the uh, separation from families, uh, and and now, uh, especially the way they treat people whom they consider threats. Uh, yes, and, now and, they have the RPF. Yeah, and, and according to, to L. Ron Hubbard, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure where I got this. I don't, I don't know if it was in the documentary or, or, or somewhere else. That, that he basically said that if, if there is negative opposition to the church, then all bets are off in terms of, of how anyone should restrain themselves from reacting. Correct. You're talking about fair game. Yes. And his exact words are, anyone who's described, anybody who talks negatively or does anything that harms the church in any kind of way are overt people, and they are able to be deprived of property or injured by any means, by any Scientologist. These people may be tricked, sued, or lied to, or destroyed. He used the, the first documented case of Paulette Cooper which was a, uh, a person just like yourself who wrote a book about Scientology in the 70s, and she was utterly destroyed. They ruined her life. They called the FBI buildings and claimed that she made these bomb threats. And they sent letters to various people with threatening windows that they said were from her. And they read a trail leading up like it was her. Now, mind you, this is the 70s and 80s, so we don't have nearly the technology we do now. But in the 80s, there was an operation done by the FBI called Snow White, when they found out that Scientologists and Sea Org members were sent in by Ron, with, by Hubbard to go and inter integrate the FBI. And they literally stole official documents from the FBI and took them back to Scientology, changed them, and then put them back. And they were caught in the act of doing that. And when they found and they went through the paperwork that they, the FBI raided the Scientology building, they found that Paulette Cooper was one of their victims. And she was cleared of all charges because she was facing federal indictment for threats to the U.S. government for bombs and harassment and all kinds of really things that would land at her in Alcatraz or the death penalty, possibly. 
If you're just joining us, you're listening to Common Threads here on WGVU. I'm Fred Stella. Kim Lewison is joining me, and we're talking about Scientology. So, Kim, uh, so we're talking about the, the various things that the organization can do, and you just described something astounding that Scientology actually infiltrated the FBI. What is it? Okay, what is it? Why has not the government been more proactive in working against Scientology? Well, the government was against Scientology. The government did not make Scientology a tax free thing uh, as a tax exempt church until 1993. When the church was founded in the 50s, when he started in 1952, he wrote Dianetics that the church, church itself was established with copyright in 1954. In 1956, O. Ron Hubbard was issued a tax exempt by the IRS, but he lost it in 1967 for not being religious. The IRS found that O. Ron Hubbard was using the money from the end of Scientology for his own personal gain and took his tax exempt away. But in 1993, that was when Dan McCabbage was in charge, he basically told that all of his Scientologists, and he had a few of members, and anybody that was at that time, the church had several thousand, not quite a million, but several thousand members, and they went in each individual state, had so many Scientologists suing the IRS for the grievances, that the IRS basically told them, if you drop all of our charges and nobody sues us anymore, we will give you tax exempt. And because of that, they are tax exempt. And sure enough, when they got that agreement and they shook hands, the IRS and Dave Miscavige, they the next day, every case that every Scientologist had drawn up was dropped without any problems, and they all got what they wanted with those cases. So essentially, Scientology uh, has the government over a barrel. They do. They get, and what's holding them in the powerhouse is not their membership, because their membership keeps dwindling because the Internet and Anonymous have come out of pointing and showing all the bad things that have done and all the people that have died while in their care because of lack of medical care and psychiatric issues and things that go on that they're not treated for while in Scientology. The problem that there is is that the church owns so many properties, but there's no people in the property. We have so much building and property value that they're worth trillions of dollars all over the world in a collective sum. But if you were to go to any random building, say in the middle of Montana, and it was a Scientology building, that may be the most beautiful building, completely stocked with everything you would need to have a Scientology church, but there wouldn't be a single soul in that building unless it was in the main populated hub. Hmm. But still, they own the property, and they have so much money, so many resources, that they're able to continue to do what they do. Admittedly, as you said, with less people. Which, which we can be thankful for, because more people are, are investigating religions and organizations. It's pretty easy. Uh, it, it astounds me that anybody in uh, 2015 who is a spiritual seeker, who has access to the Internet, uh, would uh, make that move, make a move in that direction. But, but clearly some people are. Not a lot, but some people are. Right. And that's the case with most, um, unfortunately, it's most people who are in rural areas that are poor and they don't have access to popular media or the internet. And that includes for rural countries. If you were to go into a main Scientology center, which would be in one of those communications would be like D.C., California, and L.A., or the Flag Center in Florida, they, any one of those locations, you will be able to find a bunch of people there, but they're not necessarily white males that you would have seen 10, 15, 20 years ago, because that was the majority of Caucasian members. Sure. You can actually... So now it's very mixed race, which is good, and most religions need to be mixed race, but they're reaching to those outreach populations that don't have 
have the means to do the research. Right. And understand all levels. And, and how about around the world? Uh, are, are they growing in, in, say, Asian countries or African countries, do you know? They claim they are, but they have shown no proof, except for buying land. Ah. And what happens is, is that the members who are not in the sea or they are either celebrities or the, the you know, member that's the carpenter on the corner that's the next door neighbor, they are the ones that are being told, oh, we need a new crop for our new building going up, and, and they name some foreign country that they've never even heard of or never been to, and they'll never be going to. Mm -hmm. And they say, this is what we're going to buy. We need $500,000 for this golden crop. It's going to be the staple of that entire nation. And they get those donations. Well, I had guests before me who were buying a single crop that cost $500,000. Even if it's solid gold, which none of them are, then that would be, I mean, the size of that cross would be humongous. Sure. So, we're kind of, the money that's coming in is beyond the auditing and the classes. It's just buying more property, but they're saying that they're fixing up current property in Clearwater, which is their main hub, or they're fixing up the cruise ship that they bought that they teach the OT Level 8 classes on, the free land. And they're saying, oh, we need to upgrade it and add a new engine. Well, there's no proof that they're doing any of that work. But they keep, but they keep offering that there's be more and more money to upgrade and take off with all the buildings that they have, but that's not what they're doing with the money. Sure. And, and am I correct that if the government rescinded their tax-exempt status, they would just crash and burn? It, it, would you agree with that or not? Yes, I, I completely agree with that. They would have a ton of property that would be, become very deteriorated, and it would, it, they would all start going into bankruptcy because they wouldn't be able to maintain any of their property. Because the senior members wouldn't be able to get paid with a little bit of money they do get paid to keep up the buildings that are out there. I see. Okay, okay. Well, uh, do you know, since Going Clear has come out, what kind of movement has there been, uh, both in terms of, of perhaps uh, uh, more encouraging behavior by the government to think, well, maybe we should look at this again, and also if you are aware of any, any movement on the side of sci and by Scientology, Inc., to, to fight this expose? Well, yes, there's movements on both ends. Um, a Scientology, when Rolling Clear, before it came out, they put out a, the now infamous full page ad in the New York Times and in the LA Times newspaper. This full page ad basically said Alex Gibney, the director of the Scientology movie Going Clear, was attacked as being a fraud. And they put all these different lies out there about him that has no justification that they're trying to scare people away from seeing this movie. That was their argument and their fight. They haven't had a personal spokesperson come out and speak on behalf of Scientology since Tommy Davis, and he left in 2011, and he's not actively involved in the church anymore at all. And before him, Mike Reiner, who was one of the people in the movie going clear, gave testimony of how he left Scientology and how hard it was for him to get out. Mm -hmm. And he was an active spokesperson for Scientology during his 34 years in the church. But the people going out and trying to stop the Scientology movement from growing more so by buying more property, there are several books out that you can look into. There's Beyond Belief, written by... Jim is scavenged. It's about the children who are born into the church of Scientology. There's the book Going Clear by Lawrence Wright. There's another book called Unbreakable Miss Lovely by Tony Ortega. Tony Ortega also has a website that he keeps very up to date. And there's actually a petition on his website, TonyOrtega.org, that is about we're going to try to get 500,000 signatures. And once we get all those signatures, we're going to have the IRS. Submitted these signatures saying revoke Scientology 
IRS status because they are clearly a cult. Here's the proof. Right, right. Um, well, as we uh, are out of time again, Kim, and uh, boy, I, I'll tell you, last week and this week have uh, just been fascinating. We could probably go on for another hour at least, but uh, the, the radio gods say we cannot. Uh, <laughs> and um, so anyway, I want to thank you so very much for your time today and last week, and I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that your work continues to bring, uh, to bring light to many, many people who, who are trying to rebuild their lives after a uh, tenure in Scientology. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, once more, you can learn more about Kim's work at www.familiesagainstcultteachings.org. I'm Fred Stella. Please join us again next week here on Common Threads.